I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and welcome to Ham Radio Answers. I'm here to help answer your questions about ham radio, especially for those new to the hobby. Radiodity is a Chinese company that wants to get into the amateur digital VHF and UHF market. Now, there are several digital voice modes to choose from. And Radiodity is aiming at digital mobile radio, or DMR. DMR repeaters are becoming much more common, especially in metropolitan areas. And there's a market sweet spot for an inexpensive and yet fully capable DMR radio. For backwards compatibility, most of these radios will also do ordinary FM, but the various digital modes such as D-Star and System Fusion and so on are all incompatible. Radiodity's first foray into the DMR market was the GD55, but users soon found it was only capable of what's called Tier 1 DMR, which is strictly handheld to handheld, more commonly called simplex by hams. But the real action these days is in Tier 2, which involves linked repeaters. Radiodity had advertised their GD55 as a Tier 2 radio and did a reset when it was shown that it was really only Tier 1. So, Radiodity came out with the GD55 Plus, which is capable of Tier 2, though setting it up properly is rather a challenge. So now we have Generation 2, the GD77, designed from the ground up to be a no-nonsense Tier 2 radio that is backwards compatible both with Tier 1 and ordinary FM. The GD77 is less expensive than the GD55 and, to boot, is one of the very few DMR radios out there that works on 2 meters as well as the more familiar 70 centimeter DMR radios. Now, we don't have a DMR repeater here on the Colorado Western Slope, but I poked around YouTube and found videos showing it working. So I'll just say at this point that it does work with Tier 2 DMR properly, one of the least expensive radios to do so. Oh, and it works fine on FM. I had a QSO via an FM repeater atop Flat Top near Montrose, Colorado, which is about 20 miles away and not in the line of sight. I received a voice report of good quality with a bit of noise, and considering the distance and the rubber duck, not bad. Let's take a look at the radio. It fits nicely in the hand and has a moderate length rubber duck antenna. The antenna connector is a female SMA, and the antenna has the male SMA. Note this is a normal but not universal convention. It has only an on-off volume knob, meaning no separate channel knob. In addition to numeric keys, it has four buttons showing up, down, left, right, plus two more, one green and one red. On the left side are the two programmable buttons that mean different things, whether used via a long push or short push, plus the orange button on top is programmable also. Some have complained that the orange button is hard to push, but this is done on purpose as the default programming uses it as the emergency button. Note that the push to talk button takes a definite push. The rig uses the Kenwood style speaker mic. One of the advantages of the GD77 is that it is much more programmable via the front panel than the GD55 was. The front panel, or the, the screen, is blue and white, very functional rather than pretty. I have the pre-production version, however now the release version is available to the public. The radio itself seems well built. 
Note that it says inside here where the battery is, it says waterproof, though the box does not make a point of it. Personally, I like the feel of it. Use the left arrow to switch between upper and lower channel. Up and down, go up and down the channels. Now, let's define a channel, okay? A channel is a collection of attributes that's given a number, channel 10. It's a collection of attributes. If you want different attributes, such as a different talk group, you need to set up another channel for that. As you can see, DMR, which was originally designed for government and commercial users, is not really designed to be programmed on the fly. You can put in over a thousand channels which you can divide into zones inside the radio. There are some quick dial features using the numeric keyboard. The LED glows green when first turned on, and then while a signal is being received, even though you may not be listening to that particular talk group, you can see at a glance that the repeater is in use. The LED is off most of the time and red during transmit. It comes with a charger. Mine is the standard plug into the wall kind, but ads now show a USB charger. The manual is entirely in English, such as it is, meaning a more complex manual than before. It's almost entirely about digital capabilities with not much on FM. Regarding DMR, one of the characteristics of Tier 2 DMR is time slots. There are two, and each takes 30 milliseconds in turn. That means the radio's transmitter and receiver have to make a very quick switchover between receive and transmit. This oscilloscope screen grab I made shows 30 milliseconds on and 30 milliseconds off, plus a little guard band time. So the RF hardware required for Tier 2 is in fact there. By the way, two time slots means two people can use the repeater at the same time. Here's a tiny introduction to DMR. Zones are essentially groups of channels that you can switch between. For example, you might want to call one Denver and another Albuquerque. Colors are like CCTSS tones. You will also program in the repeater frequency. Repeaters are often linked via internet. So if you go into a talk group that has a wide footprint, such as Worldwide English, your voice will go out over every linked repeater that also has the Worldwide English Talk Group available. The time slot used is an essential part of accessing various talk groups. In addition, the bandwidth of the two-slot signal fits very nicely in a 12.5 kHz channel, whereas normal amateur voice channels on FM are about 25 kHz wide, so we really have a 4 to 1 advantage. There are multiple talk groups with overlapping contacts. Talk groups are fairly well established, such as North America, Midwest, and so on, so you don't have to create these but you will need to use the standard talk groups that already exist. Note that even though DMR is new, there's lots of structure already in place. You need your own ID code, which you can get from DMR-MARC, M-A-R-C. Fortunately, even with all this structure, it is possible to call CQ usually by stating that you are listening, to an area covered by the talk group. It's also possible to send pre-programmed text messages. There's a lot of detail and structure here, and I really suggest lots of patience. Try to get a code plug, meaning a complete programming file from someone else who is on the repeater, or at least sit with an expert and learn what needs to be done. Now, the radio is capable of normal FM, but it's clear FM is not the radio's primary purpose. 
There's no VFO mode where you can punch in the frequency in this radio, but rather you have to select a channel and pre-program it even for analog. It is said this can be done via the front panel. I haven't seen that myself. The settings are easy via the programming software. You can mix and match channels between FM and DMR with a couple mouse clicks in the programming mode. I set up a channel with our local FM repeater and it works fine. Let's talk about programming. Programming is done via the included plug-and-play USB cable. There's no messing with COM ports. During programming, if you're having some communications issues, try setting the uh, radio's volume to about mid-level. The GD77 programming software is available on the Radiodity website, or you might be able to get it off the dinky little uh, DVD CD that comes with it. This is proprietary software, but is free. The radio's heavy digital orientation means it can't be programmed through Chirp, which seems to be stuck with analog. I suspect Chirp will eventually support the GD77 and other DMR radios, or else it'll risk losing relevance. The programming software has a basic mode and a complex mode. A readily available password is required to open up all options, and there are many, many, many options. Once you set it in complex mode, it stays there, though you can choose via the program command to send it back to the basic mode. Now, as mentioned, you need to get an ID number from dmr-mark.org. The ID must be set via software. Let's do that on mine. Note that this is a skeleton introduction to the software. I'll turn the radio off, insert the supplied programming cable, and start the software. Here's what it looks like. The first step is to download what's in the radio. Click on the little radio icon and watch it download. Note you need to double click to get a window to open. The first screen provides basic information. In the next screen, you can change what happens when you turn the radio on. You can also set a power on password. The menu box has a bunch of stuff you probably won't touch. Next, number keys can be set as shortcuts for certain contacts. The general setting has some important settings. This is where you put in your ID number. Note that to participate in the worldwide DMR network, you need to have this number and enter it correctly. Note that if you have multiple physical radios and you will only use one at a time, you can use the same number for all of them. A lot of the terminology is strange. If you don't know what it is, leave it alone. The buttons give you the screen where you can program the three programmable buttons I mentioned earlier. I'm going to leave these alone. Text messages provide a place to put pre-programmed text messages. For example, you might put in a message like, it's time to go home, meet at the car in 15 minutes. Now, privacy is somewhat different from encryption. I note that encryption is illegal in the United States. Now, under signaling system, we're getting into heavy DMR stuff. You can likely skip this. However, you will need to set contacts for DMR use. Receiver group list is also heavy DMR stuff. Think of zone as a set of completely different memories, so you can set, say, Denver as one zone and Albuquerque as a second zone. Then, by simply changing zones, you've got all new channels and so on. Okay, channel is where the real work is done. You can select digital or analog, and which you select decides which features to turn on or gray out. Note that this is where you set frequencies for different repeaters or simplex frequencies, and both the receive and transmit frequencies must be set. In the USA, the standard split is 600 kilohertz on two meter FM channels, and 5 MHz on 70 centimeter FM channels. 
This screen is where you set whether the channel is analog or digital. If you set analog, your usual tones are settable. Usually only the transmitting CTCSS tone is needed. Set the channel bandwidth to 25, which is the United States standard except in certain crowded areas. You can also choose the low or high power level and so on. Other options are available if it's a digital channel. Again, I recommend that you contact people who already use the repeater you're interested in and get a code plug, which means a complete collection of settings for all the stuff you can access. It will be a lot easier than trying to set each one of these features by hand. The very last function sets up some scanning. The scan V means VHF scan or 2 meters and scan U means UHF scan or 70 centimeters. Once you have everything set up, then save the programming set to your computer. Note that this saved file becomes a code plug. Then write it to your radio. Turn your radio off and then back on and you're ready to go. Do I recommend this radio? Yes, I do. You may want to try an ordinary FM radio as your first radio, but if you're very patient and work with your Elmer, you could set this up for all the FM you need. And then, as you get into DMR, you'll have a plenty capable radio at your fingertips. If you are going to buy this radio and would like to support my channel in the process, use the link you see below to get it from the Radioddity store on Amazon. You'll get it for the same price as usual, but I'll get a small percentage that helps me finance Ham Radio Answers. This is an awful lot of material on a single radio review, but I hope it proves helpful. Please click on like and please subscribe. Check out my dcastler.com slash support webpage for ways you can support the channel. I look forward to reading your comments about this radio. Remember to use both feet when walking. And until next time, 73.